Astoria, Queens, where the opening scene to Goodfellas was filmed. To me, being a gangster was better than being president of the United States. Even before I first wandered into the cab stand for an after-school job, I knew I wanted to be a part of them. It was there that I knew that I belonged. But to me, it meant being somebody in a neighborhood that was full of nobodies. They weren't like anybody else. I mean, they did whatever they wanted. They double-parked in front of a hydrant, and nobody ever gave them a ticket. In the summer, when they played cards all night, nobody ever called the cops. Must I forever be a beggar? Tony Cicero. Tony. Tony ran the cab stand and La Bella Vista Pizzeria and a few other places for his brother Paul, who was the boss over everybody in the neighborhood. Hey, Paulie. Paulie might have moved slow. But it was only because Paulie didn't have to move for anybody. Must I forever be a it's your fault. You started. I started. It's your hey, fault. Junior, here. At first, my parents loved that I found the job across the street from the house. Henry, Henry, don't play ball. My father, who was Irish, was sent to work at the age of 11. And he liked that I got myself a job. He always used to say that American kids were spoiled lazy. And my mother was happy after she found out that the Ciceros came from the same part of Sicily as she did. I mean, to my mother, that was the answer to all her prayers. I was the luckiest kid in the world. I could go anywhere, I could do anything. I knew everybody and everybody knew me. Wise guys would pull up and Tootie would toss me their keys and let me park their Cadillacs. I mean, here I am, this little kid, I can't even see over the steering wheel, and I'm parking Cadillacs. But it wasn't too long before my parents changed their minds about my job at the cab stand. Your mother and sister, make sure you give them to us. For them, the cab stand was supposed to be a part-time job, but for me, it was definitely full-time. That's all I wanted to do. You see, people like my father could never understand, but I was a part of something. I belong. I was treated like a grown-up. Every day, I was learning to score. A dollar here, a dollar there. I was living in a fantasy. Fuck his mother and his father. And just on the block is the location where they filmed Paulie's home. How could I go back to school after that and pledge allegiance to the flag and sit through good government bullshit? The phone was left. <laughs> Paulie hated phones. But he wouldn't have one in his house. Right, call. You want me to call him back? All right, make the call, right. Uh, he used to get all his on, calls hey. secondhand. Then you'd have to call the people back from an outside phone. You get it, Nickel? Get him on the phone call. Yeah, go get your feet. There were guys, that's all they did all day long was take care of Paulie's phone calls. For a guy who moved all day long, Paulie didn't talk to six people. If there was a union problem or, say, a beef in the numbers, then only the top guys could meet with Paulie to discuss the problem. Everything was one-on-one. -on -one. Paulie hated conferences. He didn't want anybody hearing what he said, and he didn't want anybody listening to what he was being told. Hundreds of guys depended on Paulie, and he got a piece of everything they made. It was tribute, just like in the old country, except they were doing it here in America. And all they got from Paulie was protection from other guys looking to rip them off. And that's what it's all about. That's what the FBI could never understand. That what Paulie and the organization does is offer protection for people who can't go to the cops. That's it. That's all it is. They're like the police department for wise guys. For wise guys.